Hey you, welcome back. Today I have something a little bit different for you. I have been thoughtfully tagged by my friend Pat from her delightful channel Book Chat with Pat to take part in the My Most Beautiful Books tag. There is something special about books that are able to captivate us, not just with their words and their stories, but with their stunning designs and their cover art and all the little details that make them stand out to us on the shelf. This tag contains nine prompts that I will be working my way through here. So let's get started. Prompt number one, a book you bought primarily or completely because of the cover. So I don't typically blindly buy books without knowing at least a little bit about them, but I did make an exception for the first volume of Mark Z. Danielewski's The Familiar, and it was pretty much all because of the cover. The die cut number one there, revealing something mysterious underneath. The strange patterns all over it, the odd graphic design choices. It was all just too tantalizing to pass up. Then, as someone who can't stand having incomplete sets, I quickly found myself collecting the rest of the series. I mean, how could I let just one volume sit there all alone? My OCD would not allow it. If I am being completely honest, I am not sure I will ever get around to reading these. My experience with House of Leaves was just too much of a mixed bag. It definitely had flashes of brilliance, but overall, I found it to be insufferably frustrating. Now, I've heard that that was intentional, meant to mirror the frustration of the book's central characters, but that did not make it any less of a slog for me to get through. The book even warned me up front that it wasn't for me, and in the end, it was absolutely right. Regardless, the familiar volumes look fantastic lined up on the shelf. Maybe one day I will be brave enough to dive in, but for now, there they will stay. All right, prompt number two. A book you want to buy that has a beautiful cover. There is no shortage of beautiful books that I have my eye on. Most of them are Folio Society editions of books I already love. Specifically, they've got an absolutely stunning limited edition hardcover of Roadside Picnic. It's a work of art in and of itself, complete with gold foiling and insanely beautiful full-color illustrations, not to mention an incredible slipcase with a lenticular panel. I want this so bad, but that $430 price tag would be impossible to justify to my wife in this economy. <laughs> Still, this edition remains my most coveted bookish treasure. It's the one I dream of adding to my collection the most. All right, prompt number three, your favorite series design. I recently splurged on the new UK editions of Ian M. Banks's culture novels, and I have to say that they are a major upgrade. The old editions were just fine, nothing remarkable, but nothing terrible either. But these new ones are a different story altogether. The sharp design and the way the spines form a cohesive image makes this my current favorite series design. Admittedly, that could just be recency bias talking, but they really do look striking on the shelf. While it is only a duology, I also have to mention this gorgeous box set of Octavia Butler's Parable of the Sower and Parable of the Talents from Seven Stories Press. The artwork is absolutely beautiful, 
and the sleek, stylish design is a perfect match for the subtle power of the stories found within. I read both of these books over the summer, and they left a lasting impression. I will have a full review coming soon, but for now, I will just say that the stories are just as incredible as their packaging. All right, prompt number four. A book with a beautiful dust jacket or something unexpected under the jacket. I have not read this trilogy yet, but the Ambergris trilogy by Jeff Vandermeer, I'm already in love with its beautiful dust jacket. It's sleek and minimalist, but also manages to pack in vibrant, colorful details. And underneath the sea foamy chartreuse hardcover is just as unique and beautiful. This edition has quickly become a favorite in my collection, and I'm looking forward to diving into it in early 2025. Another standout in my collection is this first edition of Stephen King's Eyes of the Dragon. The dust jacket has this shiny, scaly texture that immediately catches the eye. But what really surprised me is this dragon's head emblem stamped on the hardcover itself. A hidden gem under the jacket that just adds this extra layer of cool. And speaking of hidden details, Neil Stevenson's Baroque Cycle hardcovers are also stamped with these neat little Easter eggs beneath their dust jackets. It really is these small, thoughtful touches that make collecting so gratifying. All right, prompt number five, Naked Hardback, a gorgeous book with no dust jacket. I've got a few naked hardbacks in my collection that I love, but one of my favorites is this book of Ian M. Banks's culture drawings. This minty cover is truly eye-catching. While the book itself is more of a novelty for culture fans, the packaging is truly top-notch. And then another standout is the Barnes & Noble edition of the Complete Sherlock Holmes. It's a real beauty with gold four edges and amazing end papers featuring this great intricate pattern. I'm usually not too impressed with the Barnes & Noble hardcover editions, but with so much attention to detail, they really outdid themselves with this one. All right, prompt number six. A beautiful paperback. This Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition of Tolstoy's War and Peace is positively gorgeous. From the texture to the French flaps to the intricate yet understated cover design, every detail feels thoughtfully crafted. The artwork alone invites you to open up this massive tome as if you're about to step into the world of 19th century Russia. It's just a paperback, but it feels like a true collector's piece. And then similarly, this Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition of Moby Dick holds a special place in my collection. It's a little simpler than the copy of War and Peace, but these illustrations on the French flaps are just fantastic. I also love a good deckle edge. All right, prompt number seven, a nonfiction book with a lovely cover. One of the standout pieces in my collection is Worlds Beyond Time, sci-fi art of the 1970s. The cover is a visual treat with its understated yet psychedelic design that perfectly captures the spirit of retro sci-fi. 
But it's not just about the cover. The entire book is a work of art. Every page is filled with vibrant, imaginative illustrations that showcase the wild, boundless creativity of the era. And the end papers are absolutely phenomenal. I just love this piece. Another one of my favorites is the art of NASA, the illustrations that sold the missions. The cover alone is a beautiful example of the sense of wonder and adventure that defines NASA's missions. The artwork throughout the book is really awe-inspiring, a perfect representation of how essential these visuals were in capturing the public's imagination during the space race. And finally, here is a book that resonates with me on a personal level. This massive tome on logo modernism. I've got a background in graphic design and I've done a lot of freelance work in branding and identity design. And this book just speaks to me. It's striking minimalist design has always stood out to me, proving that simplicity done well can be just as impactful as the most detailed artwork. I pull this book down whenever I need a little inspiration. All right. Prompt number eight, a book with great end papers. A lot of Neil Stevenson's hardcovers have beautifully detailed maps that grace the end papers, but with Seven Eves, my personal favorite of all of his works that I've read so far, Instead of maps, the end papers feature these stunning black and white illustrations that are directly relevant to the story. There is a real artistry in this book's presentation that I appreciate a lot. All right, prompt nine, a book that looks just as good spine out as it does Face out. The McSweeney's hardcover edition of The Instructions by Adam Levin is nothing short of gorgeous. With its striking gold foiling and impressive heavy thickness, it's a book that commands attention on any shelf, whether it's displayed spine or face out. The design is bold and elegant, the kind of book that makes you want to pick it up and just admire it. Though I have yet to read it, it feels like a positively monumental undertaking. It's one of those books that I just couldn't resist. I stumbled upon it a few months ago back at Chamblin, and the moment I saw it, I snatched it up. There is something special about a book that has this kind of presence, one that invites curiosity, not just because of the story inside, but because the physical object itself is just so irresistible. And that's it, that's the tag. The final prompt is to tag other people. So I will go ahead and tag my boy Chris at Chris's Reading Corner. Gabriel at Paperback Voyager and Danny at Danny the Bookkeeper. But no pressure, fellas. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little look at some of my most beautiful books. Thank you so much for watching and to my friend Pat for tagging me. And I will catch you in the next one.